Hello, in part two of my NARDL series, I'm going to present an empirical formulation and show how to perform the analysis on e-views. For this study, I'm going to be regressing occupancy rate for U.S. hotels against real GDP growth rate and the average daily hotel rate. And so the linear functional form is going to be as shown because there are two regressors. However, both of these regressors are going to be decomposed into their positive and negative shocks. And therefore, the nonlinear functional form would be as represented right here on eViews is going to be actually shown in this manner with uh, POS for positive, for positive and NEG for negative. All right. Now then, not to forget, the uh, X positive and the X negative are the partial sums of positive and negative changes in XT so determined as I explained in the preceding video. Alright, so for this study though, uh, notice that it, the nonlinear error correction uh, model right here would explicitly uh, recognize those positive and negative uh, changes in X. And so right here, this is the short run component of the model. We're going to have X1 positive and X1 negative and data for X2 because we have two regressors. Likewise, in the long run components of the model, we're also going to have the same X1 positive and X1 negative. The same goes for X2. So the big deal here is that we're going to be constructing the long run asymmetric effects of x1 and y, which basically is the uh, asymmetric long run coefficients calculated by dividing the coefficient for x1 positive by the coefficient for yt minus 1. That's it right here, right? Phi 1 positive is the coefficient for x1 positive. And then we're going to divide that by rho, which is the coefficient of yt minus 1 with a negative in front of it and do the same for phi 1 negative which is this guy right here dividing it by this in both cases keep in mind you're gonna put a negative in front of the quotient alright that tells you that if any of these coefficients is a negative then automatically the numerator is gonna be a positive now for the short run asymmetric effects of x1 and y which again is gonna be the composites of the uh, short run uh, coefficients as you can see right here we're gonna do that for the uh, positive changes and also for the negative changes and so we're gonna then use the wall test to test for long run asymmetry as shown right here and also for short run asymmetry as shown right here now um, rubber hits the road so we're gonna go to eViews right now and uh, we're going to go to add-ins and then click on it, download add-ins and uh, go ahead and, in and install NARDL. That's what you're going to do. So anyhow, so let's go on ahead right now and go to um, eViews. So here's my data set. So to do your add-in, you go here and you click on, uh, you know, you click on uh, um, download, uh, uh, sorry, download add-ins as I explained and then go with it, all right? So anyhow, I've already done that, as you're going to see. So these are my variables. The first thing you want to, of course, do is to confirm that none of your variables is uh, more than I1. You can have uh, a mix of I0 and I1 variables in an, any ARDL uh, model, whether it's uh, the symmetric one or the nonlinear one, as we're demoing right now. So to do so, all right, you, d you double click on this and then go to View unit root tests standard and uh, go here oh it's not stationary at level so let's see if it's stationary at um, after first differencing so standard switch this to uh, first difference and make sure this is all what you want and okay and voila it is stationary after first differencing so we know that occupancy rate is I1 so the same way you go to GDP and view and you need to test standard uh, leaving this at level and I'm going to show that this is stationary at level as you can see and of course that's the reason I'm using ARDL to do this guy right here and uh, 
ADR is also going to be I1. But anyhow, so what we're going to do now is to identify the variables we're going to use, beginning with its target variable, and then the next one is GDP, and then ADR. Right-click, open as equation, and voila. Go here for method, go down to ADR, and um, I've already figured out that what I'm going to need is a maximum lag of 4 for de for dependence and 3 for regressor. Some people get bent out of shape about this. I say just go with uh, what whatever your uh, gut feeling or your lag selection criteria tell you and then you can always come back to fix things if, in if after doing your diagnostics you find that you have some serious issues like zero correlation, heteroscedasticity and the like. So this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to uh, my trend specification is just going to be constant. All right, and uh, just go ahead and click OK. I know you're saying, but I'm doing ARDL. Don't worry, we're going to sneak into NARDL from here. So click OK. All right, so this is your traditional ARDL uh, output right here, which if you were doing symmetric ARDL, you would have had to go to View, go to Model uh, uh, Coefficient Diagnostics, Long Run Form and Bounds Test, and this would have been your output and you would have had to go down here and say voila my F is greater than the upper bound critical value at the 1% level or if you like at the 5% level also and then that tells you the model is uh, uh, you have co-integration you could also look at the error correction by going here error correction form and this is uh, your error correction right there which has the correct negative sign and is statistically significant. But this is not really what we want. We want to go into NARDL. So right back here on estimation and you clicked OK and you have this traditional ARDL output, you would now have to go to add-ins and here you're going to choose make nonlinear ARDL. Click on it. Oh my goodness, we have this situation right here. So what are we going to do? Okay, get out of it and go to eViews, sorry, go to Views <laughs> rather, and then uh, go to Label, and right here under Description, type Asivars, Asivars, right there, meaning asymmetric variables. So what are, with a colon afterward, so what are going to be our asymmetric variables? For this study, is going to be the log of GDP space and the log of ADR, and click and hit Enter right there. All right, I thank my good friend uh, Mohammed uh, Mio of uh, Mio School of Research in Lahore, Pakistan for uh, uh, helping me out with this. All right, so now we go to add-ins and now click make nonlinear ARDL and voila, look at that. All right, so we got the situation going on. So this is again the traditional ARDL but with uh, the regressors now broken down into their positive and negative forms. So with this, let's go ahead and do the asymmetric long run, um, uh, the asymmetric uh, co-integration. Right here, go to coefficients, diagnostics, long run form and bounds tests, and we go down here, and this is uh, what we're looking for. Fortunately, our F statistic is quite higher than the upper bound critical value at the 1% level. So we conclude that when asymmetry is taken into account, the, um, uh, the variables are co-integrated. And you could also even go to view and look at, um, go to your coefficient diagnostics and uh, error correction form, and it would also confirm that um, your co, uh, that uh, the speed of adjustment here takes on the correct sign and is statistically significant. All right. So anyhow, so this is what we got here. If there are any other variables that you would like to um, add in their decomposed form, you type them in here physically, and then you hit OK again, and it's going to give you the ARDL, out of which, again, you go to coefficient diagnostics, long run form, and bounce test, and uh, you come up with the result that you want. In the next uh, se uh, section, of my presentation, I'm going to interpret the uh, different parts of um, the conditional error correction as well as the uh, levels uh, equation output.